Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a radical function at several points. We have f of x equals 1 over square root of x plus 1 plus the square root of x. And we're going to evaluate, find the value of f of 1 plus f of 2 plus so on and so forth all the way up to f of 100. So this is a sum and we need to evaluate everything in between 1, well 2 through 1 through 100, all right, so that's what we're going to evaluate. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of these values and what they look like. For example, what is f of 1, right? You're going to replace x with 1 in the expression f of x, and that's going to give you 1 over square root of 2 plus 1. And then if you evaluate f of 2, you're just going to replace x with 2. That's going to give you 1 over square root of 2 plus, you know, the square root of, well, should, that should be a square root of 3. So a square root of 3 plus the square root of 2, and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and do the f of 3 as well to see what that looks like. When you replace x with 3, you're going to get square root of 4, which you can write as 2, it's up to you, plus the square root of 3. So we get all these values, and we're going to add them. So take a look at the sum. 1 over root 2 plus 1, 1 over root 3 plus root 2, plus 1 over 2 plus root 3, and then dot, 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 all the way up to 100, you are going to get 1 over 101 plus the square root of 100, which is 10. Okay, great. So we have this gigantic sum with 100 terms, but notice that if you try to make a common denominator, it's going to be a disaster, right? Imagine trying to multiply everything in the numerator, the 1, by everything besides the square root of 2 plus 1. That's going to be like a gigantic product, so on and so forth. So, obviously, making a common denominator here is not a good idea. Sometimes we have to look at things that don't work to better understand the things that work. So, we're going to use a different approach here, obviously, because we're not going to go through this. And that approach involves using conjugates. So the use of conjugates in, with radical expressions is extremely important, obviously, with complex numbers as well. So what is the conjugate idea? We have something like square root of x plus 1 plus the square root of x in the denominator. And if you just change the plus sign to a minus sign and multiply this expression uh, by something similar to this, by its counterpart, sort of, but with the minus sign, right? Square root of x plus 1 minus the square root of x. Here you're going to use the formula which is called difference of two squares and that's going to give you the square root of x plus 1 squared minus the square root of x squared from difference of two squares. But notice that square root of x plus 1 is x plus 1 and square root of x squared is x and they're going to cancel out and that's going to leave you with a very nice number. So we did it in the general case but you can also look at some of the specific cases such as this one multiply square root of 3 plus square root of 2 by its conjugate and you're going to get one all the time. This is a technique used for rationalizing the denominator of radical expressions. So we used it in the you know most general case so we can basically apply it to the sum. So now let's go ahead and write our sum uh, using this idea. So let me uh, explain one more time how this is going to play out. So I'm going to start off with 1 over square root of x plus 1 plus the square root of x and that is going to equal to the same thing, of course, right? It's always like that. But I'm going to multiply this by its conjugate. So it's going to be square root of x plus 1 minus the square root of x. Uh-oh, that's not good. Okay. Square root of x plus 1 minus the square root of x, top and the bottom. And now the top is going to be square root of x plus 1 minus the square root of x, and the bottom is just going to be 1. So this is going to turn into square root of x plus 1 minus square root of x. Now here's our sum. Let's see what our sum looks like. We have 1 over, now we're going to start with f of 1, right? It's going to be square root of 2 plus 1. And we have 1 over square root of 3 plus square root of 2 plus 1 over square root of 4, which is 2 plus square root of 3, dot, 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 all the way up to... 1 over square root of 101 plus 10, which is square root of 100, right? So when we multiply by each, con each conjugate, we're going to get square root of 2 minus 1. And remember, when you're going to divide it by 1 all the time. So we don't really need to write it, right? 
So we can write this as square root of 3 minus square root of 2. In other words, if you ask me, like, what is the reciprocal of square root of 3 plus square root of 2, I would say square root of 3 minus square root of 2. So, so the reciprocal of the denominator here is basically uh, the its conjugate, right? Okay, the product is 1, in other words. So this is going to give me 2 minus root 3, dot, 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 all the way up to root 101 minus 10. Awesome. So this sum is obviously uh, kind of like a telescoping sum. A lot of things are going to cancel out, but we kind of need to figure it out in a nice way. And sometimes with these kinds of sums, uh, it's not like every other term cancels out, but it's more like that sometimes the terms can be more apart. So in order to get a better understanding, I usually like to do the following. What about writing all the positive terms together? And obviously, you could also use sigma here, right? So I can write it as square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 plus the square root of 4, which is 2, and then dot, 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 all the way up to square root of 101, because that is a positive term, right? As a plus sign. And then everything else will be subtracted because we have to negate everything. But then inside the parentheses, it, they're going to have a plus sign. 1 plus root 2 plus root 3, dot, 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 all the way up to square root of 100, which is 10. If you want, you can write it as square root of 100 for sake of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, consistency maybe. Okay. So now notice that this sum is interesting because a lot of ter terms are going to cancel. For example, root 2 and root 2. And obviously, everything after root 2 all the way up to square root of 101. Square root of 101 is going to stay because there is nothing that can cancel it. But everything in between is going to cancel out. And here, 10 is going to cancel out because right before square root of 101, we have square root of 100, which is 10. Awesome. So what do we have left? We have the square root of 101 left, right? And then in the second one, we only have 1 left, not the 10. So square root of 101 minus 1. So that's going to be the answer, right? If you are wondering what the answer is going to look like, obviously, right, in this case, well, you can kind of estimate square root of 101 as 10-ish, right? Maybe 10.1 is probably going to be too large, but it's 10 point something. And we can actually take a look at the exact value here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exact value. So this is what the uh, numerical value looks like. The square root of 101 is going to be like 10.04 something. When we subtract one from it, it's going to be 9 point. 04987562111. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye bye.